can see that. Anybody here watch The Office? All right, well, I'm not talking about The Office today, but I am going to be talking about blues and the, uh, the genre and form of music that is called blues. Um, I brought my guitar. I'm going to try not to hide behind it, but usually that's what I do. So, um, Blues is a, a, a genre, a form of music that uh, originated in the late 19th century, and it was created as um, as kind of work songs originally. It kind of came from spirituals, and it, and it developed after uh, emancipation. It developed into more of a form of um, of, of recording artists and and uh, a wider known expression of music. And today, I'm going to talk specifically about the process of writing a blues song. You could say how to write a blues song. And uh, the three main keys that we'll be talking about are finding the inspiration to do it, discovering your voice, and keeping it simple. Um, and before we even talk about how to write a blues song, we should probably talk about why one person would. So first, um, finding your inspiration. A lot of people, um, we're, we're going to talk specifically about Ray Charles and Johnny Cash and some other people that have taken blues and, and put it into their music, people that hopefully we would all know. And uh, most of them write from their experiences. Uh, for example, Ray Charles write, wrote a lot about sadness, and he started writing blues a lot about, um, well, because of the experience of him being blind at a young age and the experience of him losing his father at the age of 10 and losing his mother at the age of 15. And for him, blues was a way to express those feelings and a way to uh, to express those experiences to others and to share them. Um, Johnny Cash is another person who took a lot of blues music and, uh, and that inspired his country music and he wrote a lot about the sadness of losing his brother at a young age and the sadness of having a, a family that was kind of torn apart, uh, both his parents' family and then also his family later when he had a, a divorce. Um, a lot of the early blues songs are written as call and response, and that's kind of the influence they got from the field songs, from the uh, spirituals. They would, so one person would sing a line and somebody would respond to it, and they'd sing that line back to them. And that kind of influenced early blues um, recording and early blues artists. They took a lot of that style with them into it. Uh, part two, I would say the second thing a person must do is discover their voice. And by that I mean not literally discovering your voice, though that is part of it. Um, John Mayer originally, you guys have heard of John Mayer. Does anybody like John Mayer? All right. I like his music. The guy's kind of a weird freak. But um, he originally didn't like his own voice, and he didn't think people would like his own voice. But as he started to sing, uh, people liked it. In fact, he, when he wrote his songs, he wanted other people to sing his songs. He didn't think he had the voice to do it, but now he, you know, won tons of awards. He's been nominated for a ton of other awards, and for him, that's how he started. He just started singing, he started expressing himself. So literally, you can discover your voice that way. And some of the, the least uh, desirable voices you might think have become the most famous. And you've got there's this guy named the Howling Wolf. And they call him that because when he sings, he sounded like a wolf. He literally did, I've heard his recordings. And he ended up being really popular back in the 50s. Um, Steve Ray Vaughan is a person that played guitar, didn't think he had a voice, but everybody liked his singing, so he kept singing. Um, and, in other words, and another way to look at it, if you don't have a voice, is to find your instrument, perhaps. And here are some of the instruments that are pretty popular for blues. There's piano, there's drums, there's saxophone, 
trumpet, trombone, and like I brought, um, kind of the basis for a lot. If it's not piano, you'll hear a lot of guitar and a lot of harmonica and, and some rudimentary bait, uh, blues songs. Um, and in finding your voice, sometimes it means dealing with what you've got. And like we said with those other musicians that maybe didn't have the best voices, uh, there's a, a man named Henry Pleasance, and he's a musicologist, and he wrote this about Ray Charles. He said, Ray Charles is a master of sounds. His records disclose an extraordinary assortment of slurs, glides, turns, shrieks, wails, breaks, and shouts, screams and hollers, all wonderfully controlled. So sometimes it just means expressing yourself the best that you can with what you've got. Uh, another thing to continually remember is to keep it simple. Um, lyrics in a blues song, a lot of times, is just kind of repetitive. And in fact, I think that's why a lot of people don't, maybe don't like them or, or don't listen to them. They think they're just repetitive. And part of that is because they aim at the every man. And uh, that's where you get the call and response songs as well. They use a lot of common vernacular. They don't try to shoot for the, uh, maybe the always the super intelligent. Sometimes they just shoot right at the gut level. Um, and, and part of keeping it simple is kind of going back to the root of what the blues means. The, the phrase, the blues, I've always wondered this, found out in my research that it comes from, um, it comes from a play called, or a, a piece of work called The Blue Devils. And um, it was written about the idea that there's these, there are these blue devils that make you sad that bring back blues. And so that's where the phrase, the blues, end up becoming. And that's how it started. Um, instrument, I've got like one minute. And so I'm going to say instrumentally, keeping it simple, um, literally, almost all blues songs do the same thing. And it's called the 12-bar blues. And I probably don't have time to play it, but it's just three chords. E7, A7, and B7. And it just does the same thing over and over again. You have so many songs that do these same things. There's a, a Howling Wolf, that guy I was telling you, that sounds like a wolf. He wrote a song called Smokestack Lightning. Same chords. Um, later on, you've got, oh, you've got Johnny Cash. Have you guys heard the song Folsom Prison Blues? Same chords. I hear that train coming. It's rolling around. The same chords. Later on, you've got uh, Cat Stevens wrote the same chords. He wrote a song called Pop Star. All the same chords. So a lot of it's keeping it simple and going back to the roots of that. And uh, that's, that's more or less how you write a blues song. So whether or not you write a blues song, which you might not, but if you take anything from this, take the fact that whatever you do, go into it with the attitude of finding your inspiration, finding your voice, and keeping it simple.